Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and on this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make the cutest, I mean seriously adorable, candy corn project for fall. And the star of the show is this. These are self-adhesive wall tiles from Dollar Tree. They're awesome. Um, so we will be using one of those. Let me just open it up because that glare makes it hard to see. Uh, they looked sort of like pressed tin, metal tin, but they're just a soft plastic with backing on it. So we'll be using that. We're going to use some cardboard. Because I didn't have the right shape, I decided to just make it. Um, we are going to be using one of these wood panels, also from Dollar Tree. It's 11 by 14. Um, it was $3. We'll be using a variety of Waverly paints. This one is orange. It's called Pumpkin. This one is yellow. It's called Maze. This one is white, and it's called White. And this one is black, and it's called Ink. Um, we'll be using some of these palette knives. It's just going to be really fun, okay? So let me get a few things out of my way, and we will start at the beginning. As you are hopping on, say hi. Let me know you're here. So I'm not just standing in my craft room talking to myself. Okay, so we're going to make candy corns. You can make them absolutely any size for whatever project you might want. <laughs> I'm using my refabbed box, but basically what I did was I just drew a candy corn. There's nothing really super special or hard about the shape, okay? So, I'm going to cut this out, and I did, I made three different sizes. I've been working on this craft project, so you would, wouldn't have to, you know, wait for paint to dry. This cardboard is pretty thick. I honestly don't think that you have to use this thick of cardboard. I'm going to show you something else in just a second. But this is just what I started with. I don't know why. I knew I had this box out in the garage. Okay. So you could also use something like this, which is much thinner cardboard. Um, I wanted to let you know that I have seen, let me guard my Sharpie. Where is it? I have seen multiple of my crafting friends doing projects like this putting the candy corn spin on these self-adhesive wall tiles from Dollar Tree. Um, I'm doing my own spin, but you know, there's nothing new under the sun. Nothing. So two people that come right to mind are um, Hildy. Uh, I don't remember what the name of her page is. Hers is not, I don't think she used this, but she did the cutest candy corn. And then... Simply Stacy Designs. So you can look those up if you want to. And, or you could just put uh, wall, Dollar Tree Wall Tile Candy Corn in the search on Pinterest and find stuff. Okay, so this is going to be a candy corn. And I'm just going to decide basically where I would want it. I'm going to try to hold still. I'm tracing it with a sharpie. I'm going to show you how to cut this stuff. Okay. So I'm going to be cutting inside of my little marking because I was tracing outside of it. So this would be quite a bit bigger than the cardboard. Um, I have made... Easter eggs. I made uh, Crip 
Christmas, <clears throat> a Christmas tree topiary. I made a pumpkin topiary last year. Um, I, think I made hearts for Valentine's Day. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. This is going to come off, and you can toss it. And you can see how easy that was to cut. Let's see. What am I looking for? Oh, I'm looking for my mason jar project. Sorry, I have a lot of things on my desk right now. Well, drafts, where did that go? If I find it, I will show it. It's a, oh, here it is. Okay, I made this either last year or the year before. I don't remember. Those are those awesome Dollar Tree flowers that I love. This was constructed on one of these MDF pieces from Dollar Tree that is the shape of a mason jar. So, I mean, seriously, you can convert, you can make almost anything just using cardboard or you can get some of those shapes. All right, so let's see which side is this gonna work better on. This one. And I'm gonna have to trim my cardboard just a little bit. Okay, next up, I'm just using my regular Schirvander low temperature hot gluing device. And, is it this side? Yes, it is. And I'm going to um, just put a band of glue around the kind of outside edge and stick this on here. Do be careful because it can get this plastic hot. That's why I'm using a low temperature one. Cindy from Florida is in the house. Yay. I have been so excited about this project all day. So I'm super excited to be coming live. And you may have to do, be doing just a little bit of trimming because you can see where my cardboard is sticking out beyond the edge of my wall tile. Okay, so let's finish gluing it down. So this is going to become a candy corn. Um, candy corns are typically yellow at the very top. That's the part of the corn that if this was an actual piece of corn that would be showing. Then there's a bigger area that's orange and then the bottom is white. So I am using maize, pumpkin, and white. These paints are all from Dollar Tree, or all from uh, Walmart, and not expensive. And they're great. I actually love this paint. Okay, so let's start with the white. Um, whoops. This project is going to require at least two coats of paint, two layers. There's the white. Let's do the orange next. I have been humming in Christ alone all day long. And I just think to myself, Lord, why didn't you give me a good singing voice? Because he gave me other things, you know. Everybody's unique. But anyways, I have been having that song. And last night when my husband and I went in to see a movie, as soon as he walked in, he said, honey, you're humming. <laughs> Which means stop humming. I, don't, I just do it so much I don't even realize I'm humming. Okay, one more brush. All right, and then yellow is going to be the very top. Can you see what we're doing here? 
I like to glue the candy corn uh, to the cardboard before I start painting. But it doesn't matter. You could do whatever order you want to do. going to look like the first coat. Because this is just plastic, it's going to take a little while to dry before you can do the next coat. I would say at least an hour. So you want to wait till this is dry and then you definitely want to give it another coat so it will look more like this versus this. Okay. I made, oh I didn't glue this one yet. Okay, I made three sizes. This one, this one, and I'll measure them, and this one. But let's glue this puppy on here first. Grab a glue stick. You have to stay until the end because it's not until the end that this gets super cute, seriously. And once you made candy corn or a bunny rabbit or a snowman or a heart or a pumpkin or whatever, you're gonna be thinking about a hundred more things that you could make. So I made this one, I made this one, I made them three different sizes, and then I made this one. I didn't measure, but I am gonna measure for you guys because I know someone will ask. I know that for sure. Okay, so this large one is 11 inches tall, and at the top, the widest point is nine inches. So it's 11 by nine. That is not set in stone, that just is the random uh, size that that one ended up being. This one is three and a half wide and four and a half long. Four and a half long, three and a half wide. And this little teeny one is four long and two and a half wide. Four this way and two and a half. They're just three different sizes, okay? There's nothing magical about what those sizes are. It's just how it happened. Okay, um, oops. now I want to show you what we're going to do with it. And I think you are going to like it. So before I came live, I took this piece, this $3 11 by 14 wood panel from Dollar Tree Plus. It has two different size, sides, and I gave it uh, one thick coat of the black Waverly paint, which is called ink. So there's the back, and here's the front. I painted both sides because I couldn't decide which one I was going to want to use, but I, I do know now, okay? And it's not a perfect paint job, but it does not matter, okay? Um, I also took one of these $3. Uh, wood easels from Dollar Tree Plus and I paint I'm you know I'm busy <laughs> just like you if I was getting this for a gift I'd have the whole thing done but I painted the parts that will show and um, I don't think let me scooch back a little bit I don't think that you can uh, see anything that I didn't paint. Okay, I didn't spray or anything this, but if you want, you certainly can. I also didn't sand it or anything. Um, and this is a $3 wood panel, so it's not super nice. And this is a $3 wood easel, so it's not super nice either. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to edge this. 
And there's two ways you could do it. You could use a palette knife or you could use a sponge, one of these scrubby sponges. So I'm gonna do it in white paint. Um, but I wanna say one thing about this white paint. This says chalk. It's not chalk paste. This is not chalk paste. It's chalk paint, which is completely different from chalk paste. Did I get the white out? These two things are not the same. Not at all. Okay, this you can use on your stencils. This, no. <laughs> Unless you only want to use your stencil one or two times. But I want to use my stencils for years to come. Okay, so um, I like these plastic palette knives from Dollar Tree. They're great to work on. I'm just dipping it in this white paint and I'm holding it like this and I'm just going to go around the edges and you'll notice in some spots it's heavier than other spots. That's what you want. That's the goal. So if it looks too perfect, uh, you could always repaint and then redo the edges if you want. This just is going to add a little bit of detail, and I'm going to do the corners too. I always do. Okay, so I need to set this aside. We may have to dry it, we'll see. All right, and now we're gonna do our candy corn. This is where it gets really fun. Let's start on the bigger one first. I am going to use black for this. Um, so, so this one, this particular one of the three palette knives, plastic palette knives that you can get at Dollar Tree, it's a set. This one is my favorite. And I'm just going to use some of this same ink paint. We're going to use the palette knife to do the edges. And we're going to use the sponge to do the front. Let me think, what order should we do this? I think, let's do the front first. Okay, look, this is not a perfect paint job. It does not matter though. Wow, there's a lot of people on here. You guys, if you are liking this kind of craft, um, sprinkle, please. That really helps me more than you can even know. Okay, so let's use our scrubby sponge, which is not wet, it's dry. This is just a kitchen sponge from the grocery store that I cut into a smaller little square. I'm not gonna wash this when I'm done, I'm gonna toss it. Okay, and whoops, I have dipped it uh, in my black paint and I'm literally just gonna rub it up and down my I want the raised edges to grab it. I'll hold this up and show you. Can you see how that raised part now shows up? Which I think is adorable. All right, let's finish this one off and then we'll do the palette knife. So I'm just pulling it straight down and then I will come back 
like for example, right here, this sort of, it kind of reminds me of a four leaf clover shape or something. It doesn't always grab the um, paint very well. So I will come back and make sure that we can see it. You can also use chalk paste like this from Magnolia DIY if you want. Um, I'm just using paint because I had that handy and, you know, one is as good as the other. Okay, I'm just touching up some of the details here. So that they show up. This is what that looks like. Isn't that cute? Let's just go right ahead and use the palette knife to do the outside. And then I'll set it aside to dry and I, oops, I did not need that much. Oh well, we've got it now. Um, I could probably use my sponge to do that too, but I could use this as well. So. I'm just going to dip that in here. You can use this to do the uh, relief part too. I just personally, I like the sponge method the best. And um, that was a method of, you can also use it for distressing, that my friend and one of the owners of Magnolia did. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is brilliant. Her name is Lisa Ramsey. She's super creative. She designs almost all of their stencils. And um, she was the first person that I saw doing that. Okay. Cute, huh? All right, where can we set it? here and let's finish these two. We'll do the sponge first to just grab the relief. Grab the raised areas here. This one in particular doesn't have very much that's raised. And then I'm going to do the edges. I am such a messy crafter. Okay, and let's do this one. So tell me in the comments if you have ever crafted with these Dollar Tree wall tiles. And what have you made? I have made probably, I don't know, six or seven or eight different projects. Never candy corn, which I don't know why not, because last year I did a ton of candy corn crafts. Ton. 
Um, okay, and let's do the edges. How can I hold it right here? Are you liking this so far? Oh, um, Shab made a comb for flowers. Tammy made a bunny. Susan made pumpkins. What else have you guys made? It is so easy and it's just different, which I love different and it's super affordable. You guys, these are on cardboard. So, super affordable. Okay. Now, I do feel like this going on here. Like I want to get my uh, heating tool out to make sure everything is dry. I also want to clean my hands off. Before we move on to the next step. Catherine made a Christmas tree. I didn't see before that. What else? I will come back and read all of your comments when I am sitting in my comfy chair after. This craft project is so incredibly affordable. The cardboard was free. I already had it. Um, the paint, I used hardly any. Debbie made a bunny, a pumpkin, a Christmas tree, and Valentine's. Awesome. All right, so let's just give these guys a little blast and then we'll move on to the next step. Mat. It's called a silicone craft and cooking or craft and baking mat, and I got it on Amazon. And um, I can I can come back and include a link to that for you. It's great because nothing sticks to it. I'll just use I'll spray some water on there, and everything comes right off. wondering is a gadget from magnoliadiy.com. It is a heating gun, a heat tool, and it's great. Okay, whoops, I am going to need that. Okay, so let's get our this might be a little blast too. I think it is, you guys, I'm sorry to keep you waiting, but let's blast this one too so that I don't mess it up. Just the edges. Where did I put my hand? Oh, here it is. Oh my 
gosh. Okay, what the viewer saying that they're proud of my son Christian. Um, I'll just go ahead and tell you guys that story while I'm drying this, in case you didn't see it. So, my son Christian had a friend uh, a few years ago die of an overdose. And he probably wouldn't have died if he had had access to Narcan. I don't know what the circumstances were. My son is not an opiate user. Um, but a lot of people really struggle with that. So, when Narcan first became available, Christian got some of it for free at a fire station or something, but it was the injection kind. And he carries it around in his car just in case. Well, it just became available, the Narcan, the nose spray, over the counter, uh, I think this week. And my husband went and got some. I saw him when I was at the grocery store pharmacy. I didn't buy it, but I think I will. And my son, we told Christian about it and that he should get some because you just never know when somebody might need you, <laughs> might need Narcan. So last night, last night Christian um, went to two places to try, two pharmacies to try to get um, some of the Narcan. We told him we would reimburse them for the cost of it. Just to have in your car. And they were out of it. And he went to a third place, uh, which was the pharmacy. And while he was in line, he noticed a gentleman sitting in the waiting area that did not look good. And he asked the gentleman, sir, are you okay? And then I don't know what, but the Holy Spirit pricked his, his heart and Christian asked him, are you overdosing? And he said, yes. So when Christian asked him if he was okay, he had told Christian that he needed an ambulance, but he didn't say he was having an overdose. Christian just asked him that. Oh my gosh. And, um, and so as soon as he said he was having an overdose, I mean, Christian was at the third place to try to get some Narcan, and a gentleman in the waiting room is overdosing. This world, oh my word, it's hard. So we need to be ready to help people. We need to be kind, caring, all of that. Anyway, so after he said to my son that he was overdosing, Christians yelled, does anyone have Narcan? And there were people in the pharmacy area. And the pharmacist came out and administered two doses of it to that man, who was then taken to the hospital by ambulance. But you guys, he was sitting in the pharmacy about to overdose. And no one noticed him or approached him to see if he was OK until my son went there. So anyways, I'm just praising God for this man, that he has another chance. You know, I don't know what his story is, but I'm praying for him that he can kick that addiction. And it was a miracle for my son too. And it was a miracle for me because just to hear the story just makes me emotional. It makes me proud of my son. But what do we all want for our children? We want them to grow up to be good human beings, don't we? <laughs> that care about other people that are kind, observant, and that's, that is exactly what happened. So, I know Christian's going to be tired of me talking about it, but it just touched me. Oh, it so touched me. Okay, so I'm going to hot glue these on here and the reason why I decided to use the back is because you see it's a little bit bigger it's too tall and I wanted it to go this way so I'm going to do it something like
like that. And then we're going to do something cute up here, and then I have a bow. So let's start with this bigger one, and I have a stencil. And let's just quickly get some hot glue on here. The reason why I have it in the easel right now is so I don't put it too far down on the board that the easel won't fit, that the board won't fit in the easel. So anyways, you guys, we were, we were coming home, my husband and I were coming home from a guy movie. We went to see The Equalizer, which actually was pretty good, but I don't typically love those. Uh, if I have this. It really doesn't matter. I'm just going to pop it on right there. Um, so we had just gotten in the car, and I called my son. He lives in Oregon, just to see what was up. And he said, Mom, you are not going to believe what happened. Just the tone of his voice, I said, oh, no. <laughs> Is it good or bad? He said, it's good. And I was like, Phew. And then he told me the story, and I just wept the whole drive home. And, okay, we need the stencil. Um, there are a lot of options for what you could do with something like this. Anyways, so when I got home, I thought about it. I thought, you know, it's a super encouraging story. He didn't. Christian didn't um, solve world hunger or find the cure to cancer. He just noticed a man that was overdosing that no one else saw, right, in front of their face. And then he had the courage to ask him if he was overdosing. And then he had the wherewithal to say, does it, out loud, does anyone have Narcan? Um, so I thought about it, and I thought, oh, I'm just going to post it which Christian doesn't like to be all like in the center of focus, so. Uh, but anyways, it was just, it was just such an amazing situation that I just, I had to share. Okay, so this is a stencil set that has these cute, cute little ghosts on it, and it says, hey boo, and there would probably be room on here well, just a little bit of room to just do the boo. But I thought that's too big. So, there are some cute, this is the new fall minis. And this is cute with candy corn. It says trick or treat. So that could be super cute. Or this one says hey boo. I mean, these are cute. But what I think I opted for was, um, I don't know which ones are which, was, I think it's called Fall Rolling Pins. And it has like, I don't know, six or seven fall words. And I decided to do this. Happy Fall, y'all. So I am just gonna do it right here. I've used this stencil once or twice. But I don't want it to pull the black paint up off of my board, so I'm going to fuzz it. Yeah, isn't his story amazing, Kelly? He was prompted by the Holy Spirit. Coincidentally, he is really... The thing I prayed for my kids since they were babies is that they would love Christ. And he is focused on growing that. And... It's like a dream come true. But anyways, yes, I think the Holy Spirit pricked his heart, made him notice that man, made him approach the man, and when the man said kind of quietly, I need an ambulance, gave him, gave him the awareness to say, are you overdosing? And then the courage to yell, does anyone have Narcan? It's just, it's just amazing. Okay, where is my chalk paste? Man, I need a squeegee. 
So I have boohooed about it enough, and it's a happy boohoo. You know, it's, it, Christian was blessed by the experience. I was blessed by the experience. The man was blessed. Christian said that the people in that waiting area were crying after all of this happened, after they watched it. Okay, this is chalk paste that I'm putting on here, not chalk paint. Chalk paint, or any kind of paint for that matter, dries quickly in the little holes in these mesh stencils, and it's permanent. And the little holes in the stencils are what give you the design. <laughs> so I want to use my stencils like 10 million times. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. So I'm going to throw this in my tub of water. So I know it would be nice to just go buy some cheap chalk paint and use that on your stencils. But the stencils are an investment and I want to use mine this year next year stay with me because we're going to do this in just a second the year after the year after the year after and if i used paint to save a couple of dollars rather than chalk paste or ink then you don't get that longevity with your stencil and i'm frugal <laughs> i don't know about you but i'm definitely frugal so i don't want to waste a fabulous stencil just to save it a couple bucks on um, on buying, and this is not terribly expensive, and it lasts a long time. You do need to keep it hydrated though, because chalk paste. Here's one more teaching. Chalk paste started its life out as a solid, calcium bicarbonate, I think is what it's called. It it was ground up, moisture was added, and coloring. In, to turn it into a paste. But it wants to go back to that hard solid. So these have a shelf life of between six months and a year. And if you find that yours is starting to get really thick or get kind of hard, which this is, I need to do some maintenance, you can put a little bit of distilled water in it and stir. And you could do that regularly. Not regular water, though, because you don't want to grow a science experiment in here. Um, okay, so that's your, that is your chalk paste lesson. All right, let's see what this is looking like. I have blue strings to clean up, but I guess I'm just going to try to ignore those. And not put my hand in the happy fall, y'all. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Okay, before I came live, I made this, you know, bow. I call my bows stacked bows because I just go crisscross, crisscross. And I just used a variety of different ribbons. Some of it is from Dollar Tree. Some of it you guys sent me. Some of it, I don't know where it came from. <laughs> but all in black and orange. Just crisscross, crisscross. And then I kind of scrunched it up in the center, not super tight. And I used another piece of ribbon that I glued on the back. Okay, and what I was thinking, get over here is I could either put this below this, but I think it's too big. I think where I want to put it is over here. Tell me what you think. And I got out um, I pulled out my little package of orange buttons that I ordered on Amazon at Easter to make some carrot crafts. Uh, and I think I will play around to see if I want to add a button to it, although I think it might make it too busy. Let's just try for a second. Okay, tell me about the button, yes or no? 
I mean, it's not absolutely necessary. It's pretty cute anyways. You think by the words. Hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, well, I see people saying they like the buttons. Okay, I need to know, should I fill up this empty space here with my bow? Maybe. Or should I put it over here? So tell me by the words or on the corn. And I'm going to glue a, a button on here. Okay, let's see. Fill the empty space by the words, okay. Top of the big candy corn. Well, let's look at that. It could, because it could go up here. Let me turn it around so you can see. I think by the words is what I'm sensing the most from you guys. So let me lay this down for a minute so I can look at it. And I, I think we've figured out what we're going to do. I'm just trying to pull this so it's a little flatter. Happy fall, y'all. Oh, and let me tell you about this button real quick, and then I think this is the winner. So, when I do buttons on a craft project, if you put them as they would line up regularly on a garment, you know, boop, 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 in a square, it looks more like a button. But if you turn it just slightly, so it's like a diamond shape, I think that's better, and that's what I did. might need to be trimmed just a smidge yeah that's where it's going and I'll fiddle with the ends of my bow off camera this turned out pretty darn cute. So, this is my spin on the whole idea of using the Dollar Tree uh, tin wall, adhesive wall tiles um, in the shape of candy corn. Um, and I know there's nothing new under the sun. Lots of other crafters have done all kinds of things. Me too. I've done a bunch of different things with the, these wall tile things. Um, but this is my spin. If you would like my list, and I'm going to sit down and edit that to include this craft mat and to include the link to my orange button. What else? Was there anything else I needed to include? And I'll include a replay at the very bottom with an old fashioned looking movie camera in case you came in at the beginning and you want to see the whole video. Um, where's my little easel? Let me throw this on the floor so that if you want to grab a screenshot, it looks sort of decent. Whoops. Uh 
Oh, you guys are so kind, your comments. Yeah, so let me know, and I'll be sure to tell you, like, for example, these came from Walmart, and this one, this yellow, is maize, M-A-I-Z-E, which is Spanish for corn. And this one's called pumpkin. You know, I'll, and this particular black from Waverly is called ink. They also have a night sky. But anyways, I'll give you all the specifics in my list. So just say list, do a this, or a this, this is better. Sprinkle, sprinkle, don't hesitate to ask questions. I'm gonna go probably Oh, and get an iced coffee with some of that pumpkin uh, creamer. <laughs> and we have a football game, uh, a Georgia football game to watch later this afternoon. So I'll be answering questions, reading what you guys have to write, um, getting back to you and, and just sitting in my comfy chair. So just let me know. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me tomorrow. For Christ and Crafting, you want a little sneak peek. We are going to do some hat projects. You guys, these adorable hats came from Walmart. Aren't they super cute? And I bought some leather at Hobby Lobby today. So I'm going to be fiddling around with that. But we're going to make some of those little leather patches for this part of the hat that look like they're laser engraved, but we're just going to use a stencil. And then I don't, God hasn't shown me exactly what we were talking about. What we are going to be talking about, I was thinking it was going to be that song in Christ Alone. Oops. But I'm not, I'm not for sure on that. So anyways, it'll be something good. So, I hope you come back. If you haven't liked and followed this page already, you might want to do that. If you have a friend who likes to craft, or who likes all things faith-related, or someone who would be encouraged by my son's story, um, sprinkle, sprinkle. Alrighty. See you guys later. Thanks for joining me.